Hey, my name is Chad Beck, and today we're going to talk about the game I created called Towers. It's a board game for two to five players. Today we're going to talk about how to set it up, how to play it, and by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be able to play it too. Towers revolves around four different zones and three different moves you can do on your turn. The four zones are as listed in the tiles, it's also listed in the investment buildings, it's also listed in the player map. So you have commercial, you have industrial, you have residential, and you have civic. Over here you have the same four, over here you have the same four. The whole game revolves around those four zones which are going to be either developing those tiles, which is creating land on the board, you're going to either be building on those tiles or you're going to be investing in those tiles. On your turn, you can only do one of those three moves, which is either develop, build, or invest. Let's talk about the trade card deck. This deck has 116 cards in it. It's made up of residential cards, civic cards, commercial cards, industrial cards, and two flex cards, which are gray, and you have tech and health. In the game, you're going to be collecting these cards to invest later into each of the different four zones. So we're going to set this deck up to play. We're going to take all of our cards that are standard, separate them from the four quarter cards, and we're going to place those off to the side where we can see them. Now we're going to break this deck down, and then we're going to shuffle each of these real quick. Before we do anything else, we're going to give each player their cards. We're going to deal each player seven cards. So we're playing with four players this game. So we're going to do one. Now, to set the rest of the cards up, we're going to take these cards right here, and we're going to divide these cards into four equal decks. They don't have to be equal, but you just need to use all the cards. So now we have the entire deck split into four equal decks-ish, and then we're gonna take these four time cards and we're gonna place them at the bottom of each of these four decks. We're gonna put it at the bottom of there and then we're gonna stack it on top of here. And then we're gonna take this next one, put it at the bottom of there, stack it on top of here. Take this one, put it there, stack it on top of there. And this last one, we're going to take a, a couple cards out of the bottom, maybe four or five. And we're going to take this last one and we're going to shuffle it in here. And then we're going to take all those cards and we're going to place it at the bottom. And now your deck of trade cards is ready for the game. On a development turn, you're going to be placing a tile from one of these four stacks and adding it to the board in the center of the table. You're either going to be placing a zone tile, a park tile, or a unique building tile. In the zone tiles, there are blue tiles, which is commercial, orange tiles, which is industrial, white tiles, which are residential, and yellow tiles, which are civic. There are five different unique tiles, which correlate with five of the unique building tiles. When setting up the game, we're going to take these, we're going to shuffle all of these unique buildings and park tiles, and place them upside down. We're then going to place all these upside down. And then we're going to add these tiles on top of these and you should have an equal amount of tiles in each stack. Now we're going to shuffle each stack of tiles again. And now all your tiles should be set up. Okay, setting up the cards for the investment buildings. You're gonna have four sections. They also have a little tab here that can be flipped over for for sale or expired. You wanna make sure your cards are in each stack are in order, going from one to four. 
then you're going to notice that there's a footprint on each one of these cards. They're going to be associated with the buildings for each section. So residential all has a square, industrial all has a rectangle, commercial all has a big square, and then civic has a small rectangle. Now, when you're setting this up, you're going to place the smallest building on the footprint first. And then you're going to arrange the rest of the buildings behind it. So now the investment buildings should look like this, placed on top of their associated cards. And when a player builds one during the game, you're going to take that card off and be removed, and it's going to be given to that player. And then the next highest building is going to be placed right there to replace it. And that's how you set up the investment cards. Okay, today we're going to be setting the game up for four players. So, Towers has a modular setup. That means that you can kind of arrange all the pieces to fit the table that you have at home. Today we're going to be playing on a table that's about the size of a standard kitchen table. Two players on either side of the board. Let's get into it. Alright, so starting in the center of the board, this is going to be the downtown square. Each player in front of them is also going to have their own player mat. Next to that is a player guide, and this will kind of help you through your various turns with information regarding to what you're going to be doing on your, on your turn of the game. Over here we have the zone tiles on this side of the table. On this side of the table over here we have the metropolitan cards in this stack, the light gray. And then here we have the zone ladder and the key ladder as well. Behind that we have the investment buildings. Again, we have blue, which is commercial. We have yellow, which is for civic. We have white, which is for residential. And we have orange, which is for industrial. Now we're going to continue walking you through a development turn, which is listed on your player guide card under develop. At the beginning of the game, we're going to turn the top tile over in each stack. We're also going to draw the first six cards from the draft. On a development turn, you're going to be taking one of these four tiles and adding it to the board. So let's start with zone tiles. As you can see here on the top, we have a unique tile. We have a standard industrial tile. We have a park tile and we have a civic tile. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about zone tiles. So we're going to take a orange zone tile and we're going to add it to the board. When you look at your player guide, you're going to see that when you build a zone tile, you're going to get four coins automatically. Coins come in one, fives, or tens. So we're going to take four coins for placing that tile there. In addition, we're also going to get one trade card from the draft. You're going to take one of these six trade cards and you're going to take them and you're going to place them in your hand. Then you're going to replace it with another one. Then we're also going to get another trade card for each connection we make. A connection is either downtown, to a park tile, to a unique tile, or to another zone tile the same color. So let's say it's set up like this, and we're going to do a development turn again. But the tiles are set up like this now. We're going to now take this industrial tile, and we're going to place it here. Same before, because we're developing a zone tile, we are getting $4 million for that. We're also getting one trade card for placing a new tile. We are also getting an additional trade card for each connection, but this time we're connecting to a park, we're connecting to downtown, and we're also connecting to a tile of the same color. So that means we're going to get three additional cards from the draft. So we're going to get one, two, three. You can never get more than four trade cards per turn. So now, let's build a park tile. We're going to take the park tile from the residential, and we're going to place it here. As you can see, when you build a park tile, you're only going to gain two coins. You're also going to gain one Metropolitan card, which is here. 
take that into your hand. And you're also going to gain one key point. Now we haven't gone into player numbers yet, but let's, for example, let's say I'm player number one. There are four tokens here for each of the players. On this side is the zone ladder. On this side is the key marker. Because I'm player one and I gain one key point, I'm going to move my number one token, because I'm player number one, up to the one spot. When developing a park tile, it's important to remember that you do not receive any trade cards at the end of your turn. You only get a Metropolitan card, two million coins, and you move your key point marker up one spot. Now, let's say we want to build a unique building tile. And let's say, for example, right here, we have the hospital is at the top of this stack. The hospital, we're going to play this. But we need a little bit of money to build a unique building. But we've made a little bit of money in the game so far. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to build this hospital. The hospital, or any unique building, is going to cost the amount that's listed on there on the gold coin. This one costs five coins. So we're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to take this five million dollars, we're going to put it in the bank, and we're going to add this to the board. Now, that costs five, we've officially bought it. We're going to find the building that fits the footprint listed on the tile, and we're going to add it to the top. As you also see, you gain three key points for doing that. So we're going to then move our key marker up three points. One, two, three. When building a unique tile, you don't get any Metropolitan cards, you don't get any money, you don't get any trade cards, you only are gaining key points. Now, it's important to remember when you're developing tiles that you cannot place further than two tiles from the center of the board, which means that if I place this here, I could not then place this there next turn. It's too far out. This is the furthest you can go from the center of the board. At the end of your development turn, you're then going to turn the tile over on this, from the stack that you pulled it from. And that's the end of your development turn. All right, now we're gonna talk about a build turn. Now a build turn is gonna be the most complicated and probably the longest turn you're going to make. Let's say we've made a little bit of money. So here's our change. We got 10, we got five, we got four here. So we got about $19 million. So let's say we wanna start building on these industrial tiles that are right here. To do that, we're gonna to need to spend money. Now, as you can see here, there's a footprint on each of these tiles that has a number associated with it. So if you flip over your player guide to your build card, you're gonna have a little cheat sheet to what these buildings cost and what they do. High rise apartment, that's gonna cost $1 million. The mid rise apartment is gonna cost $2 million. The condo is gonna cost three. The office is gonna cost four. The strip mall is gonna cost five. The warehouse is gonna cost six. And the factory is gonna cost $7 million. So let's say we wanna build a factory right here on this industrial tile. To do that, we're gonna to need to spend seven million dollars. So we're going to take seven million and we're going to add to the bank and then we're going to take a factory and we're going to add it right on top of that footprint. Now, not only does that number seven mean it costs seven, it also means that it has an output of seven on the zone ladder. So what that means is you have four tokens right here that are associated with each of the four zones as well. White for residential, orange for industrial, blue for commercial, and then yellow for civic. So because we just built that seven on that industrial tile, we're then going to move the industrial marker up the key ladder seven points. Now we're gonna start at the bottom left corner and move right before going up to the next row above it. So for the example here, we're gonna move it up seven points. So we're gonna start at one, we're gonna go two, three, then four, five, six, and then seven. Now a couple things happen here. In addition to just building that, if you look at your player card, when you build a light gray building, you're also gonna gain key points in addition to everything else on your turn. So because we built a factory, if you look over here on the right, you're gonna see that you gain two key points as well. Now again, we're player one, so we're gonna move our key point up two places, one, two. Now that this tile is completed, meaning that there's no more footprints on this tile to build on, 
that means that I get to claim that tile as my own. And because I'm player one, I'm going to put one of my player one tokens on top of the tile. Now, if you develop a tile, meaning you take one from the tile stack over here and you place it, you don't get to claim it. And even if I was to build one building on this industrial tile, I still don't get to claim it. However, if I was to build both buildings on this tile, then I would be able to claim that tile as well. But I'm not going to do that this turn because we're going to get into investment buildings. In addition to that, you're also going to see that we have the zone ladder. And we're going to see that there's stages one, two, three, and four. Now these are associated with the investment buildings listed over here. Because the orange industrial token is in stage one, that means that the stage one investment building is now unlocked. So I'm going to now make that for sale. And that means that any player on their turn can build that building. But I'm not done building yet on my turn. In fact, you can build as many buildings as you want on your turn as long as you have the money. So I'm going to continue building and I'm going to build this investment building. So I'm going to look here and you can see that it costs four coins. So I'm going to go ahead and pay four coins and I'm going to build this building and I'm going to place it anywhere on one of the footprints in the downtown section that fits this building. So I'm going to go ahead and place this building here and then I'm going to take this card. When I take this card and I flip it over, you're going to see the building I just built as well as the points associated with that card. And now I'm going to keep that card until the end of the game. Now, because I just built that building, stage two is not unlocked because we're not to stage two. As you can see, this is still in stage one. This is in stage two. We're going to then take the next tallest building from that footprint and we're going to place it on this next card here. And now it is no longer for sale and it's going to go back to expired. Let's say I want to keep building and I want to go ahead and build this six here. I'm going to spend $10 million and I'm going to get 4 million back and I'm going to go ahead and build this warehouse. This costs six coins. I'm going to place it right here. And again, we're going to first move this token up six points again. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Leave it there. In addition to that, I'm also going to gain two more key points. So we're going to slide my key point marker up one, two points. At the end of your build turn, you're going to collect the same amount of cards as the amount of buildings you placed on the table on that build turn. So let's look at what I built this turn. I built a factory, I built a warehouse, and I also built the investment building bedrock shipping. So at the end of my turn, I'm going to gain three cards from the trade card draft. So I'm going to take one, replace it. I'm going to take two, I'm going to take three, and that's the end of my build turn. It's important to remember at the end of your build turn that you can never gain more than four trade cards at the end of your turn when you start pulling cards from the draft. On an investment turn, you're going to be using your player mat. And on here, you're going to notice that you have commercial, industrial, residential, civic, and you're going to notice that there's three icons associated with each. And if you flip this build card back over here, back to this side, on the left hand side of your developed player guide, you're going to see that there's actually a name associated with each of the icons to kind of help you out in case you don't have that card and you're looking for it and it's maybe your first time you're playing the game. So on an investment turn, you're going to be matching sets of three of each of these cards and then you're going to be turning them in in exchange to move your square up this ladder one space. So for example, I'm looking at my deck here. I have a study, I have a law, and I also have a health. And that is a set of three required to advance civic up one. So I'm going to take these cards and now they're going to be removed from the game entirely and I'm going to move this box up one space. Two things are gonna happen when you do this. First thing is you're going to gain the amount of money listed that's on that step of the ladder. So because I went up to step one, I'm gonna gain five million coin. So I'm gonna take five out of the bank, I'm gonna bank it here, and I'm also gonna gain one metropolitan card. So I'm gonna take one from the top of the step here. 
Now, as you get higher and higher on this ladder, you're gonna to start to gain more money. The second gains seven million coin, the third gains nine million coins, and the fourth gains 12 million coins. You're always gonna gain a Metropolitan card as well whenever you invest cards. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about player markers and why they're important. So for example, I'm player one, I developed this park on a previous turn, I get to claim it immediately with my player marker. Now let's say I completed both of these industrial tiles, and I get to claim both of those tiles with my player marker. The player with the most connected tiles that are claimed with your player marker is going to gain the largest district card. Now the largest district card gets awarded to the player with the most connected tiles that have been completed. And when you have this tile, you're going to place it on the other side of your player mat like so. At the end of every fiscal period, you are going to gain a certain amount of points for having the largest district. In addition to the largest district, there's also a mayor card. The mayor card is awarded to the player who has the most parks and unique buildings constructed. The mayor card is not awarded every quarter, but it is awarded at the end of the game and it's for an additional 10 points. This card should be passed around from the beginning of the game. As you see here, player four has built a park here and unique building while I've only built one park. So for now, player four gets to hang on to the mayor tile. In addition to zone tiles, park tiles, and unique buildings, downtown tiles can also be claimed as well. There's four quarters downtown, and once the final building is placed downtown, you can also claim that building. So let's say that I build this stage one commercial building right here, and I complete this quarter of downtown. It's got all four buildings in it, that means it's completed, and because I was the last person to build that fourth building, that means I get to claim that tile for my own as well. Let's talk about the end of a fiscal period. The game is broken into four quarters. When we shuffled the deck earlier, we shuffled in four time cards. As you play the game, on a development turn and a build turn, you're gonna be drawing cards from the draft. Eventually, when you take a card from the draft and you replace it, a time card is going to be revealed. That signals the end of the fiscal quarter. When that happens, whoever's player it is continues taking as many cards as they need to draw for the end of their turn. And then everyone's gonna be awarded points. At the end of every fiscal quarter, each player is gonna be rewarded points based on how many investment buildings they place downtown, how many key points they have on the key ladder, as well as how much they've invested into each zone in correlation where that zone marker is on the ladder. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our key points. My key marker is at four, so I'm gonna get four key points for that. So one, two, three, and four. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at how many investment buildings I've built. So far I've only built one, but I'm gonna get that many points every time a quarter ends. So for now, I've only built one bedrock shipping, which is that building here, and I'm gonna get two points for that. So I'm gonna take two out of here, add them to my stack, and I can chip up if I want, so I'm gonna turn that in. I'm gonna take that five. Now I've kind of set this up to explain it a little bit easier with kind of some drastic scales on here. But if you look on here, there's four numbers on the key ladder. The four numbers on the zone ladder are associated with how much you've invested into each zone. So let's walk you through this. The smallest number stands for the first bracket that you've unlocked. The second highest number goes with the second, third, and fourth. For commercial, I've invested three times, which means I'm gonna take the third number on the scale. So here, the commercial zone marker is in stage two, and it's in level three. And because I've invested three times, I'm gonna get the third number, which is six. So I'm gonna get six points for my investment in commercial, and then I'm gonna move to industrial, which I have not invested in at all. So I'm gonna go over to residential, which I've invested one time. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna look at, it's in level one still. I've invested one time, so I'm gonna get one point for that. Then I'm gonna look at civic, and I've invested two times in a civic. Civic is also in level one, but because I've invested twice, I'm gonna get two points for civic. So I traded in all my points, and based on everything I have right here, 
based on my investment buildings, my key points, and my investments, I have a total of 15 points at the end of this quarter. Okay, let's talk about Metropolitan cards now. This is gonna switch up the game a little bit and add a little bit more strategy. As you invest, you're gonna gain Metropolitan cards. When you build a park, you're gonna gain a Metropolitan card as well. And as you collect these cards, you're gonna be able to do different things on your turn. Now, you must play them at the beginning of your turn, which means that if you gain a Metropolitan card at the end of your turn, you actually can't play it. You have to wait until the next turn. But you can play as many as you want on your turn, as long as it doesn't have this logo in the top left corner. This logo signifies that it's a special card and that you can only play one of them per turn. That's because these cards actually let you do two turns on one turn. So, with a land survey card, for example, I'm allowed to develop one tile of your choice before performing an investment on the same turn. So, that's gonna allow me to take this orange industrial tile, place it here, which I'm going to then gain four coin for. So, I'm gonna take one, two, three, four coins, place them here. I'm also gonna gain my trade cards, which I get one for placing it. I get one for placing it next to a zone of the same color, and I get one for placing it next to a park. So it's a total of three cards I get to get. So I'm gonna take one, two, and I'm gonna take this tack here. So that's the end of the development part of my turn. Then I also get to do an investment on top of that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I have these cards right here. So then I'm going to invest again in Civic with another Health, Law, and Study. So again, I'm gonna take these cards and put them off the table. And then I'm going to move this one up. I'm gonna gain nine more million dollars from that. So I'm gonna do one coin in, 10 million back. Got a lot of money now, looking pretty good here. I'm also gonna gain another Metropolitan card for that. And that would be the end of my turn. So there's all sorts of Metropolitan cards. Eminent Domain, that allows you to claim a tile that hasn't been completed yet. Key points, it's gonna give you key points automatically. Floor foreclosure, that's gonna allow you to take a trade card from another player. Lots of fun stuff. I don't wanna spoil it all for you, but a lot of strategy in these cards very vital component with the game, especially considering that it allows you to do two things on the same turn. Sometimes it'll let you develop two tiles on the same turn. Sometimes it'll let you invest and then build or, you know, all sorts of things. You just kind of start playing and see what there is. Okay. The game ends at the end of the final quarter after each player's counted up their points to see who has the most. Thanks for watching this video on how to play towers. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below.